to our celebration this morning. If we have any visitors with us today, we would certainly like to make you feel welcome and hope that you enjoy being with us today. This morning's Mass is being offered for the Fannin family. Our celebrant this morning is Father John, and he will be assisted by Deacon Bill Kester. Today's Mass readings can be found in the back of your hymnal on page 1138. Again, that's 1138. And our entrance hymn today, if you want to go ahead and get ready, is In Christ There Is No East or West on page 832. That's page 832. Now, if you'll take a moment, let's all stand and rise and greet one another. I'll begin by singing, In Christ There Is No East or West, on page 832. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with each of you. And with your spirit. Thank you and good morning. Good morning, Father. Coming together as God's family with confidence, let us ask the Father's forgiveness, for our God is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you are at our side. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are our peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are teacher and guide. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace that made fervent in hope, in faith, and in charity. They may be ever watchful in keeping your commandments. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who misled and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people, you have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they no longer fear and tremble. And none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall be saved shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord.
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers and they had no opportunity to even eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Two very different examples of leadership are presented in today's readings. Jeremiah warns us in our first reading that false leaders mislead and scatter the flock. 2,600 years ago, he was fighting division at a time when the Jewish people were being threatened and ultimately conquered and taken into exile by the Babylonians. 600 years later, We hear in Ephesians of the struggle the early church had, first Christian communities, with division between the Gentiles and the Jews. Should the Gentiles be first required to follow the law of Moses before being accepted into the Christian community? It's fair to say that today we also are struggling mightily with division. Psalm 23 in today's gospel shed much light on what godly leadership looks like. Beside restful waters, he leads me. 
If, I hold God, if we hold God central in our lives, Psalm 23 tells us we may experience repose, a refreshing soul, guidance to stay on the right path, courage, an overflown cup, goodness, and kindness. That doesn't sound too bad. Furthermore, in today's gospel, Mark tells us Jesus fed the people with his word. And he began to teach them many things. God's word feeds us today, just like it did 2,000 years ago when Jesus was speaking the words of life. Jesus feeds us today at this very Mass with his word and with his sacrament of the Eucharist. Are we able to recognize good leadership when it does present itself? Masks, no masks, vaccination, no vaccination, tightly restricted or loosely enforced immigration, investments in social programs or individual initiative, and bootstrap self-improvement. Should we remove statues of historical figures or keep them? Should we have strict voter ID or loose voter ID requirements? These issues are difficult enough without Christ. Remove Christ and they become dizzying, made worse by the debilitating polarization, discord, and even violence that we are experiencing in our times. Such discord only worsens when we see ourselves and neighbors as anything other than children of God first and foremost, and therefore our own brothers and sisters. Without God's help, the dizzying influence in our lives and these tough decisions can turn into outright malaise. When we're in this malaise, is it even possible to recognize God's voice when he's trying to communicate individually with us? How can we follow him if we can't even hear him. God tries to talk to us in a number of ways. Prayer, creation, the Bible, and the sacraments to name a few. Our primary means, a primary means God uses to communicate with us are those people he places in our lives. How can we hear his message if it's coming from someone who I've already tuned out because they might have slightly different views than I hold. If I discount most of what others have to offer who have different views than my own, I've essentially done two things. I've restricted a primary channel of communication God uses to get through to me. And I've also taken a couple of steps toward making myself into God. It might not be evident, but we are becoming excellent at seeing neighbor as less than fully human, as entirely right or wrong, as good or bad, and most decidedly, as something much less than what they deserve, given our common divine Father, and given that this Father made us all in his image and likeness. I had the pleasure of working for an excellent boss several years ago. Over dinner one evening, I asked him for a good book recommendation on leadership. He told me to read the Bible. I was, I was astounded. Actually, I was also agitated. I wasn't inviting God to be a central part of my life at the time of this conversation. Accordingly, I was unable to recognize the importance and truth of the recommendation, so I went off and found my own book on leadership. Was I open to God communicating with me through my boss over dinner that night? In no way. Absolutely not. Today, I recognize that indeed his suggestion was exemplary leadership. 
I also recognize the voice of God in the words of my boss that evening. Real leadership, authentic leadership, empowers. Real leaders nurture the gifts of those they're leading. Real leadership unites. Real leadership helps clarify when confusion, when confusion is running wild. Real leadership is enduring. Real leaders place the needs of others before their own. Real leaders lavish credit on others and they accept blame when things go wrong. Real leaders reveal our blind spots and they acknowledge their own. Real leaders admit when they're wrong. Real leaders embrace both truth and love simultaneously. Because love without truth isn't love, it's sentimentality. Truth without love is brutality. Real leaders lead by example. As we consider what constitutes true leadership, it becomes easy to see our Lord Jesus as the one true shepherd, the embodiment of total and complete leadership. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. What happens when we intentionally make God the center of our lives? First and foremost, we're in a position to hear him when he's communicating with us. When we're centered on God, we recognize our own call to lead. We're better spouses, parents, sons and daughters, friends, mentors and bosses, and yes, servants, because we are here to serve each other. This becomes apparent when we're centered on the shepherd. When we're centered on Christ, the fog of, of confusion and the malaise of polarization give way to a much different vision. One we read about in the very verses of Ephesians that immediately following today's second reading. So then, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the holy ones and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the capstone. Through him, the whole structure is held together and grows into a temple sacred in the Lord. In him, you are also being built together into a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Please stand. <clears throat> the Apostles' Creed can be found at number 176 in the Gather Book. And let us pray it together, please. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. God's loving kindness gives us the confidence to offer our prayers for our sisters and our brothers. For the church and its shepherds, for a deepened spirit of service to all peoples, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the world, for the preservation of green pastures and the care of our water sources, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who feel alone, that they will be comforted, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we listen to the words of Jesus and seek peace and healing from our divisions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those throughout the world suffering from COVID and those that care for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the cause of the canonization of Father Jean-Claude Collin, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing for all who experience the shadows of sickness and pain, especially for Pete Cabrelli, Bill Schroeder, brother of Star Millen, and Tony Rett. And for those in our prayer list and book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our community who have died, especially for Helen Cecilia Copra, grandmother of Marist Campus Minister Nick Rodewald, and William Renauden, father of Debbie Kehoe, OLA's preschool director. And for those inerned in our columbarium, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we offer our own personal intentions. We pray to the Lord. We invite the intercession of our Heavenly Mother and the patroness of our parish as together we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. My sisters and brothers pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice 
brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons. You formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world and all of its wonders to rule in your name over all that you have made and forever praise you for your mighty works. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love and when as once for his disciples and so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through the passion and death of the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. 
Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. And grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop, with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all women and men who minister in your name. Open our eyes to the needs of our sisters and brothers. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and to freedom, to peace and to justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ. We pray today especially for recently deceased Maris priests, Maris brothers, and Maris sisters, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and the Martyrs, with our Marist Saints, Marcelin, Champagnet, and Peter Chanel, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of Christ be with you always. And with your spirit. Thank you. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
Christ's peace be with you as you go forth to minister to the absent members of our community. Graciously be present to your people, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Adults and teen volunteers are needed to serve our Mass in many different ways. Please check the bulletin and the parish website for information on upcoming training sessions for the following. Extraordinary ministers of Holy Communion, lectors, and greeters and ushers. Please consider the serving. I would like to say a little word of thanks for those members of our parish community who come to Mass as families with young children. It's great to have them in our midst and to help them to learn that this is their worship home. After 25 years of college campus ministry where there were no young people, it's delightful to be part of a community of all different ages. The Lord be with you. And And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. As we go forth, we sing the church is one foundation on page 742. That's page 742.